What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel for another video. So today we're here with the valve body from the 47RE and today we're going to be converting this automatic into a manual. Ish. <laughs> so currently it's semi-manual you could say. It's still an automatic but he has modded it and he uses it manually. He has a lockup switch and he can shift the gears manually in it. But today we're actually going to be converting it 100% to a manual. So we're just going to start tearing it apart and then laying the pieces out as we go. It may be a little bit of a confusion. We don't yeah. know exactly what we're doing, but we got the instructions from the build kit and we're just going to go from there. Once it's all torn apart, inspect it and start making the modifications. Yeah, the build kit wasn't exactly what we were expecting it to be. Um, there's a little bit more that we have to do than we were really expecting. So this is going to be kind of a learning experience for both of us but I just wanted to bring you guys along so you guys can see exactly what we end up doing, so. And if you guys are interested in the power-driven diesel manual valve body conversion kit, this is what I bought. So this is what you would be up against if you get that. This is everything you're gonna have to do. I got the 425 to 485 horsepower rated one. So you don't have to do quite as many things as you do if you were gonna go with a higher horsepower but I decided when it comes time that I get the turbos on the truck and everything sorted out, then I'll just go back in here if I have to. But I am planning on sending my transmission off to Power Driven Diesel to get a 1500 horse rebuild, probably, you know, maybe a year or two down the road, but this will cover my power goal for right now and should be good to go up hunting and drive around for a while. All right, let's jump right into the video. <laughs> So pretty much just gonna start unscrewing everything and seeing what we got, what we are up against here. So I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> I just know this is a valve body. I don't know what any of the individual things are, to be honest. <laughs> so pretty much I'm just starting by taking off all the electrical. Pretty simple. I'm gonna have to make sure to lay everything out how it came so we know what we're doing to some extent. Yeah, so we know exactly how to put it back together. See if we get anything. Okay, so we got a couple screws over here to disconnect that. So I can go ahead and bend this little holder for the oil tube out of the way. Be able to just pop the oil tube right out. So then from here, I'm just gonna have to take apart that whole upper or lower half of the valve body, whichever you wanna call it. Best thing I ever did was buy a drill. That just shot out. Good job. Mm, what was it? Thing? Remember that little piece that I lost and I we didn't have lock up? Oh, the broken piece. The piece that you just decided to try to make fit even though it was no, not what's supposed to actually go in no, there. No, and then we made we found it, remember? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's it shot out last time we took it apart too. And that's how it got lost. Hmm. <laughs> Funny. If that thing goes shooting out of your valve body, make sure you find it because <laughs> this is very important. Very important. Yeah, when he took that out to um, mod this, he lost that and it was out for quite a while until we finally found it. So. And I had no lockup. Yeah, you would think that we would have been thinking about that since this is not the first time he's taken this apart. But no, just let it shoot out, I guess. All right, all those screws are out now. Slide that aside. And there's the inside of the valve body. One of them. Yeah, inside. Check that out. I think they look so cool on the inside. All those little passageways. Trying not to make a mess because we're inside. Yeah. Kind of needed a table for this job. I'm just putting the spring back in where it came out of that top plate. 
so we make sure not to lose it. Right here, you're gonna have a bunch of check balls. Wanna make sure not to lose any of those. So right here's a check ball, right here's a check ball. Make sure not to lose those when you take that plate off. So right there, I filled that passage with JB Weld to enable second gear lockup. There's a lot of information on the internet if you guys are interested in doing that to yours. Go ahead and check that out. You can get a lot more detailed information. So we didn't tear it all the way down, obviously, to the bare bones. We're just going to do what we can with as little as tear down as we can here. Just because I don't want to go too far into it to where it all start getting scared that I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and open up the, the bill manual. Step one. Right now, we're just getting access to the first spot. We gotta drill a couple holes. That's step one. Firm up, lock up just a little bit. So that spring goes right there. So I'll take this valve out, and then I gotta drill a couple holes down in this passageway. So it's going to be the first passage. I got to take a 0.096 drill bit. So he's going to be drilling right down in here. Take my dial indicator, make sure I'm using the right drill bit. Yep. Gets very dirty. Yeah, I got oil all over. So I'm going to be doing two of these holes to do a much firmer lockup. This is kind of scary. It's like I'm triple checking myself to make sure I'm doing this right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's kind of odd that how you convert this from automatic to manuals that you drill holes in it. That's just terrifying. is dripped. So now I gotta do a second one right in there with it. And you only drill it how far down? All the way through. Oh. My question is how am I supposed to clean these metal shavings out of here? Straight up. Hole two, drilled. Scary. <laughs> You're just trying to get these metal shavings out of there. So, step two pull this valve out. And now I get to drill a hole right through here. Alright, so for this next step, we're going to be drilling a 364 inch hole sideways through the lube and converter flow. And it's going to be about 1 8 inch down from the top. Only one of that size though, so. Good. All right, next hole is drilled. So next we're gonna grind the stem end of the TV valve to 930 seconds of an inch. But we're not gonna be bringing a grinder in here right now, so we're gonna leave that valve out and we're gonna skip this step until tomorrow. I'll just do it at work and then install yeah. it into the valve body once it's all put back together. Shouldn't be a problem. But if you were to do this for yourself, that's what you'd be doing. So if we were to be grinding the stem end of the TV valve, we would be installing their new yellow spring. But if the original diameter on it is different than the new yellow spring, then we would just be reusing the old one. 
So we are going to be installing that new yellow spring. We're just skipping grinding the stem end of the TB bell. So this is that new yellow spring and this is what we will be installing. And we need to be grinding this down to 9 30 seconds of an inch. So that's the yellow spring, correct? The new yes. one? Yes. And it's the same diameter as that one? So we will be using the yellow one. So in order to keep up with the process of how all of this is supposed to be done, even though we are not grinding down that, that stem end, he is just going ahead and replacing that orange spring with their new yellow one as if we already did grind the stem end that it goes on to. So he'll end up doing that tomorrow, but for now that's just how we're gonna leave it and we're gonna move on to the next step. So now here is the manual valve that we will be going ahead and installing. So in order to get to this automatic valve, because we're gonna put the manual one in, there was a plate that was right here, if you can go ahead, if you can see that. And he just had to go ahead and take that plate off so that we can go ahead and get the automatic valve out. So you'd also have to go ahead and use the rod that came in the same package as the manual valve. So you also have to go and use that and compress the check ball for the rooster comb to be able to get the valve out as well. So now that ball is out. So here you can see the difference between the automatic valve and the manual valve. They're quite a bit different. You can tell by the center of them. It's a little bit different. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the manual valve installed. All right, so the ball is back in. The manual valve is installed. All we had to do was compress that ball while keeping the rooster comb lined up with the manual valve. So step four, just making sure we're in spec. Looks like we're good to go. It needs to be 0 0.030 of an inch flush either way. And I would say that it is. Not that I know what that should look like because that is very small. It's flush. <laughs> yeah. All right. If you do need to adjust it, all you have to do is bend the arm tip with some pliers. We're just reinstalling the plate right now that holds a couple of the valves inside of the body. So we're gonna make sure we get all the check balls right back in where they're supposed to go right now. There's a little diagram in the instructions. All right, so we are taking this check ball out right here because it will allow for a much firmer shift if we leave this ball out between first and second gear. Yes. So this check ball is out, but here, 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 and here is all the other balls that are staying in. So now we will be removing the original third to second gear spring and installing the new black spring. So here on the side of the valve body, we have three springs and we went ahead and replaced this one um, here in the middle with their new orange colored one. And then the piece that goes over those springs also has a spring inside it. So we went ahead and replaced that spring in there as well. So we just put the cover for the valves and new springs on the side of the valve body so we can move on to the next step here. So they provide a new one, two governor valve. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that right now. Perks of having long nails. So here is the difference. This right here is the one that we just took out. And this is the one that we're putting in now. So they look a little bit different. I'm going ahead and putting that in now. Now that's replaced. You are supposed to save this one. It specifies that. I don't know why. This? But yeah, it wants you to save it for some reason. I don't get it. So now we can reinstall this plate that held the valves in. So now we gotta take off this cover and replace the little bracket with the heavy duty one they included. There's another little tiny spring in here. It's 
thing has so many springs. This little cute little bracket. It's a lot heavier duty than the old one though. Ow. So right now, I have to drill a hole in this little top cover that goes over the lockup bracket spring. It's going to enable a little bit of a firmer lockup for the modified engines. So the next step, we got to take this. I have to drill a hole. I'm not comfortable with this stuff. Through this little dam right here. It's a little hard to see, but right there, I gotta drill a hole directly through it. It's kind of confusing why I need to put all these holes in it. I know. I think that's just the most bizarre thing, but who am I to say what we should and shouldn't be doing? It is what it is. I feel like this is just like how to destroy a doll's body. Done. I don't know if the average guy is turning their automatic doll's body into a manual. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> I mean, I feel like going and drilling holes into an expensive piece of your transmission is a little more that I'm personally comfortable with. <laughs> Same. But I'm doing it. He's willing to do and try everything though. If I'm not comfortable with it now, I will be later. Mm. Could be worth it. And it could screw me. Yeah. So you could easily turn into how to mess up your valve body. DIY is cool. Until you realize how easy it is to mess up your stuff. So originally, we would have needed to drill a hole right here, right here, and right here. But because we took that check ball out earlier in the video, we only need to drill right here and right here. So just these places. We're going to go ahead and drill some holes in this now. And hopefully we don't mess anything up. Big yeah. So since this hole right here was already big enough, Kyler just went to this hole right here and made it a little bit bigger. But this one is already drilled the size that it was telling us to drill it. So we didn't do anything with that one. I can't believe that hole's already big enough. Mm -hmm. Bigger than that even. Well, that's what power driven says, but the kit says to go bigger than power driven. So, since the kit says that this can go up to 0.135, we're actually just going to go up to 0.125. And this one's at 0.109. So, we're just going to make this one a little bit bigger since currently I believe they're probably about the same size. So, he just went ahead and deburred it. So, it's good to go now. Now we're going to move on to the next step. Alright, so now we get to just go ahead and put everything back together. So hopefully we'll end up putting everything back together the exact same way that it was taken apart. <laughs> Minus the couple things we ended up changing, obviously. So one of the check balls that we're re deleting from that part of the valve body looks like it was actually wearing through on this, as you can see. Isn't that insane? So I guess it's very common on these, but interesting to me. Alright, plate's going back on. We replace that spring with a new yellow spring. But alright. So we did everything except grinding on that TV valve, which Kyler will end up doing tomorrow at work. So we put everything back together for now. We're not going to mess with anything more tonight, but thanks so much for watching. I hope this I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give us a thumbs up because this has taken a couple hours. <laughs> but if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and tap that bell if you'd like to get notified when we post because we upload every Tuesdays and Fridays. But thanks so much for watching, guys. And have a good day.